Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested here, and of course I'm here with... Jen from Tested. And Jen, you have brought uh, an interesting diorama here. This is, uh, not, this is a combination of some of the things you've built in the past and some new things. What's going on here? Uh, yeah, well, you, I've cannibalized some of my former kits to put pieces into this. Um, but this is kind of like the overview of all of the things I've learned so far about LED lighting in dioramas. <laughs> all put together in one sort of mismatched uh, experiment. Yes, yeah. from your book nook to the projects we did with the, the Glowforge mm -hmm. last year, all of those were really leveled up and accentuated once you incorporated your LED lights, little spotlights, things to kind of highlight all the design work you did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and like the lighting, you know, can be an afterthought. Like you can build the whole thing and design it and then later figure out how to light it. But I've started to get to a point where I'm actually incorporating lights into the design itself. So I'm coming up with the laser cut pieces to accentuate what I know that I can do with light. So today we're going to hear about some of your, your experiments uh, as you've been testing different lighting solutions. And there are many of them yeah. at this scale uh, for maybe what future projects that mm -hmm. we may see untested. And this, so this is like kind of all the different techniques you've tried so far. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, it's a little bit mismatched. It's not quite, you know, cohesive in terms of a of a actual piece, but it's meant to be sort of a demonstration. It's you know, it's very um yeah, it's sort of like a little science fair like here's here's all the things that I learned during my studies. Love it. Okay, <laughs> where are we starting? Uh so let's start at the front. Um super basic, like the the first thing that everybody does with LED lights is to just like throw some of those little um the tra traditional like globe shaped a little mm -hmm. pill shaped uh, diodes and you can kind of tuck them behind pieces of scenery so the first thing i did was to throw an led um, behind these little trees here and then the other thing that people often do is just to do a basic diffusion so mm. i've got some uh, leds inside of the house here and when i light it up um, they are frosted behind some milk plex which diffuses the light and gives it this uh, kind of glowing uh, it's sort of like more of an ambient light than uh, than a directional light. I mean, even though these are basic materials, because you can buy these diodes with even the resistors built in, so you just plug in the power, as you have done here, there's technique to this, right? Like you're, as you're seeing in the video, you don't actually see the diodes because they're, they're really bright by themselves. Yeah. And so here, hiding them, so you're up lighting and back lighting, uh, and in addition to you're using almost like a, a scrim to kind of spread the light through the diffusion, you're emulating in miniature scale, like what would be a lamp inside or some exactly. type of spotlight. Yeah, and you could put like flickering lights in there. Mm, mm. Um, another thing that I did for this project, which uh, I think looks really cool, is I threw some silhouettes in those windows. So there's a light behind it and the light is diffused, but if you look closely, you can see this like outline of a figure standing in the doorway. So right. there's there's lots of different things you can play with in terms of that diffusion and having like silhouettes and cu like filigree cutouts in front of. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so just kind of like layering all those different pieces. Yeah, what, what kind of lights are inside this house right now? Uh, these are just um, 12 volt uh, regular, you know, the, the standard LED, what you think of when you think of an LED. Um, I have found some super tiny ones, which I use in the book nook uh, kits. They're like smaller than a match stick, a mm. match ahead of a match. Um, and those are great if you have like really, really small stuff and you need to like bury uh, parts inside of things. But for these, I just wanted, um, you know, kind of bright light, a lot of spill. Um, and one thing I'm noticing too is like as you move those lights around, you're, you can get different effects just by changing the position of them behind those, right. uh, those cutouts. So like you'll get a softer silhouette or you'll get a ha much harder crisp line. Same way as like if you were to cast a shadow. Yeah, yeah. and the light, the color here is built in. because mm -hmm. It's a blue and a green LED here. Uh, what you've done, I've also noticed that uh, you've used fairy lights mm -hmm. in, in projects and that's just an off the shelf. You have a battery pack yep. built in and they create a, a, actually a nice glow, uh, but those are usually like warm lights and then you might want like a, a, a tinted filter or something. Yeah, and you can get them in a variety of different colors now. Um, but yeah, I, I like mixing, kind of having the, the light sort of spill into each other. So having like, the blue uh, light that's hidden behind the scenery and then that kind of like bleeds into the green light that's coming out from the windows. So there's sort of like painterly effect that's happening. Love it. Okay, uh, moving back from that, this starts to look almost uh, theatrical. Yeah, so start, you're starting to get that depth, starting yeah. to get the layers. So the next one, let's see if I turn on the right one here, this edge lit uh, ghost. 
This is another technique that we've seen used before, um, edge lighting for like things like signs and uh, you know awards and little display pieces. And all this is is a LED strip along the bottom. You can use uh, regular um, uh, uh, SMD LEDs, um, or now the really common are COB LEDs, which have that um, really dense placement of the um, the diodes. And so uh, it's just running a strip along the bottom edge of that clear acrylic. And what it does is it will light kind of a cast uh, glow around the edges, but it also has wherever you etch the design, right. it will also glow in those parts. Right, uh, and it tra traverses the entirety of um, whatever acrylic shape you have. Uh, although the shape really does matter too. It does, yeah. I've noticed on some of them, if you kind of like turn a corner with your design, the light uh, won't kind of bend around that corner. So. Yeah. You generally want to have something that's wider at the base and either straight or tapers upwards um, and inwards so that uh, the light can reach all the parts of your design. And those COB LED strips, they look like a continuous line. They're very thin, so mm -hmm. almost matches the thickness of the acrylic. It's perfect yeah. for hiding under, you know, you can actually have a plane. You think of it as having multiple exactly. planes of, of these lights. Very yeah, cool. and you can see, you know, through the clear acrylic, so you're getting, yeah. you can do multiple layers of mm -hmm. those edge lit mm -hmm. pieces. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, there is another effect that I've been playing around with with the edge lit, and that is layering um, an opaque sheet in front of it so that you get uh, kind of your, like, it's just like these little pinpoints, which I thought worked really well for stars. And let's see if I get the right one. Yes. Um, I don't know how well you can see it through all these, these layers of uh, filter here, but there is uh, some clear acrylic, which is edge lit, and that's uh, behind a... Uh, black night sky so you're just getting those little pinpricks of light glowing so instead of having to have a whole LED light panel back here yeah. lighting this I'm just taking that one strip of COB LEDs and throwing the light all the way up through the entire backdrop and the stars here are those etched still mm -hmm. so they're etched but you're because you have you have the vector you have the design you're creating a perfect mask yeah around them and using here just some plywood yep exactly so it's just like a mat around it um, so that's that's edge lighting. Um, another effect that I that I just kind of thought about, it, which seems pretty obvious, is to use the edge lighting um, to do oops, to do that. Um, so what you're seeing in front is a sort of like an up light, um, but it's it's created by having a piece of clear acrylic in between two pieces of opaque, so plywood or foam or whatever. Um, and what it does is if the back layer is higher, you'll see that glow sort of like fade up mm. along the back one because it's still doing that edge light effect. Like you can see it there on my hand. Yeah, yeah. And as long as you cover where the edge is actually glowing, you don't see the light effect. You just see the glow coming up. Uh, so very much like how in the very first light we demonstrated, that blue light which is up lighting, but it's a pinpoint, almost like a spot. Mm -hmm. uh, here it's diffused along a, 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 a plane uh, and you get a stretched out even glow. So you get diffusion plus spread across a larger area. Yeah, and I think there's some interesting, I noticed like areas where, cause I, I made the um, the clear piece so that it goes up into like that, that little zombie hand coming mm -hmm. out and behind the gravestones. So the light's actually going sideways as well. And wherever it goes around a turn, it has this kind of um, almost like a sunburst effect. Mm. So I think there's some interesting things to play with there in terms of like cutting uh, the shape, that, that diffusion or the um, refraction layer to have different patterns, to create different patterns with the light. Very, very cool. Um, so all of these kind of can also not work, not only work, you know, um, w in a scale up, right, but they can work w along each other, right? Yeah. You can create different types of lighting. Um, how, how are you thinking of how to use these or what, what are the kind of questions you have uh, going forward in your, in your explorations? Uh, a lot of different ways to like combine things. Like where, where do you get that um, dramatic effect when you like have too many things, like everything's lit and everything's sort of a high point. Um, so trying to play around with, and that was the idea with this piece is like, you know, as I, as I turn things on and off, like what, what stands out, um, most when a combination, you use a combination of different effects. Um, I, I know like you've been doing this recently in projects is like combining some of these where it's like edge lit and, uh, a separate ambient light and creating this whole entire atmosphere with different light sources. And right now I see all your lights are aiming upward. Mm -hmm. you know, there's no reason why you couldn't have structure so the lights could be sideways or top down. I feel like 
lights from top down, is, it's really powerful. Yeah, that more like theatrical, because yeah. the lights would be coming from above the stage. Yes, yep, yep, yep. And these are so bright that you don't need, you know, the giant, you know, spotlights. Yeah. Uh, they can really just be hidden inside some extra design. Yeah, and like same as with, you know, kind of theater idea, like as soon as you like paint your edges and stuff black and you hide that where the light source actually is, like you don't see that pinpoint, mm -hmm. it sort of just recedes. Like all of these frames, everything kind of just like vanishes into to the extra space so you can hide things behind those sort of like set blacks. When you're designing something like this, you know, for a diorama, you're also, like, you, have, you have wiring to yeah. consider as <laughs> All well. All of this. <laughs> and uh, these LED, LED strips are oftentimes three volts, some of them five volts, COB ones are five volts. Um, and then your individual diodes are gonna be, you know, different voltages. How do you think about how, how to manage that stuff? It's a lot. So this one was very much just whatever I had on hand, which are, they're all different voltages and I could add resistors and get them all to be the same, you know, step them down to be the one power supply. Um, in this case, I just kind of, you know, stuck everything together. But ideally, if you're working on a diorama, you want to hopefully just have one thing to plug in. So I would, um, tr like to try to find a way to combine these different lighting elements and have like one power source, maybe multiple switches so I can turn mm. on, you know, different parts. Um, but yeah, right now I've got 12 volts, five volts, and I think that's it for this one, but you could have a variety of different, yeah. One last thing, uh, there is, as you can see, a, a couple of layers of this filtered uh, sort of fog effect. And this is something that I, I haven't quite figured out yet. I'm definitely open to ideas for this. Um, but right now it's a uh, silk screen fabric. So like what you'd use on screen printing. Oh, and I, I stretched it across these frames and there's three, there's three of these sort of like screens. Oh, I didn't know if that was, you know, vellum or what type of mesh, but wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it, you know, it's not, it's not perfectly taut. Um, and it's, uh, you can kind of see like the shine to it. So I think vellum might be a good thing to try next, but I really like this effect of having like multiple layers of like, it's almost like atmosphere in between mm -hmm, and it creates mm -hmm. this like depth that you can't get without uh, the sort of like, when you look into the distance and things that like, get fuzzy, yes, it has yes. that. Yeah. has that depth effect. Yeah, that you can't get without actually building yeah. true depth, right? You're talking about a, a, a version of force perspective, um, but with um, defocusing. Yeah, with, with yeah, With okay exactly. almost, right? The lens of your eyes. Uh, very cool. And so it, it, it very much is, you know, the type of thing you would have in a theater uh, because of how deep a stage would be. Um, but you would have layers of lights. In here. Yeah, exactly. And it's interesting to play around with. Um, I started moving light around to see where, you know, where you would place the light to get the kind of effect that I'm going for. Um, but you can kind of like put objects in between them and as as they stack up, they sort of fade into the distance. Uh, um, and you can get silhouettes like there's, there's so much in here that I feel like we could learn from, from theater design and set design that I just like, I want to dig into this as a, as a tool for dioramas. And I love that to explore that you did create a diorama, right? This is it's not a final project. This is an exploration yeah. in lighting uh, and it allows just like when you're prototyping with cardboard or foam core, you can't get the tangibility of it until you actually build it and see how you know, the physics of light works and bounces off. Totally, yeah. There's no, there's no simulation for this. I had yeah. to try it and move. Or no cheap around. simulation. Yeah. yeah like supercomputers and <laughs> yes, and there Pixar. are. Yeah. There are <laughs> simulations, but in order to see how it feels in real space, I had to, totally. I had to make one. Awesome. Uh, well, I hope this inspires people out there um, to experiment with lighting. These are just off-the-shelf parts. Mm -hmm. We'll have listings of where you can find some of these in uh, description below, but. There are maybe model makers out there with their own ideas and we'd love to hear them. Yes, please share your ideas. I'm so into this. Right? We, we've both been in like such a lighting kick yeah. lately. So share, share your ideas, nerd out with us. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.